The second panel will discuss challenges of Muslim minorities. The panel moderator is Professor Zhang Zhongfu, National Chengqing University. 各位先生和女士把去时间 Dr. Walker Woody 发表他的这篇论文 有关于宗教与种族的迫害 我们欢迎, Dr. Woody Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Your Excellencies Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of Rohingya community of Myanmar and around the world, I wish to express my sincere thank and sincere gratitude to His Excellency uh, Professor Dr. Abdullah bin Abdul Muhsin of Turkey of Rabata Muslim World League and His Excellency Foreign Minister of Taiwan. Minister David Lin for hosting this special unique event. It is a glad, great pleasure to have the opportunity to address the ethnic and religious persecution of Muslim minority in this international symposium. The systematic persecution of Muslim minorities in various parts of the globe is a growing concern for the Muslim Ummah and the international community. The persecution of Muslim minority population have two components around the world if you look at around the world what's happening to Muslim minorities in various countries. First component is that persecution on religious base. Based on religious faith, they are being persecuted. The second component is persecution on ethnic base because their ethnic identity they are persecuted. In fact, these two components are intertwined. One can easily separate from one to another. This is because Islamic religious identity is a great denominator in ethnic and cultural attributes of all, almost every Muslim. Despite where we live, which part of the world we live, which country we live, which region of the world we are from, the Muslim communities from around the world can connect, relate from one to another in many ways because of our religious ties, our religious background, which is a very strong bond among us. All Muslims around the world, as Alhamdulillah, has a strong bond because of our religious identity. When we look at around the world, there are many countries where Muslim minorities live and coexisted peacefully for many, many, many centuries with other communities, such as Buddhist community, like in here in the Taiwan, and Christian community in many parts of the world, and even in most cases in India, Hindus religion, we lived peacefully traditionally in the past. But not in this case, right now what's happening uh, in most parts of the world, uh, when one community or a government become hostile against Muslim minority, for any reason such as intolerance, the growth of nationalism, extremist ideology, in non-Muslim majority population of the government, or the government, majority population which is non-Muslim, or the government, hostility comes and then we become very vulnerable. So then we Muslim minority become target, particularly because Muslim minorities when they are vulnerable and weak and helpless. If we look at that around the world, we can look at some history of what happened in many parts of the world. I'll give you some quick example. For example in Europe, what we have seen in Europe, former Yugoslavia, and then with Bosnian issue. And now we can see it in the Russian Federation with Chechnya and other places. And you look at Africa now as a big issue in the Central African Republic and maybe some parts of the West Africa as well. In Asia, you look at the, even India and democracy where there are violence against Muslims uh, in, in Kashmir 
know, in, in uh, Gujarat, in, in Hyderabad, they are all, despite the democracy, and then Ayodhya mosque issue, you see in India. And we have seen in West, part of Western China, we have seen the Uyghurs and others. And now we are seeing in Sri Lanka. And then Thailand, we have seen some, but uh, Hungary life seems to be much better now. Uh, still, their struggle is there. And more importantly, what is happening today in Myanmar about Rohingya people. So these are some of the examples. There are common issues in almost all of these cases. There are common threats, common issues that uh, Muslims have become. Uh, they are facing the challenges of persecution, uh, of intolerance, discrimination, uh, uh, blunt persecution, violence, ethnic cleansing, policies by government, and in some cases, genocide, you know, slow burning genocide or a uh, 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 blunt genocide. So, what challenges do the do the Muslim minority, Muslim ethnic minority around the world, what challenges do they face commonly across the board? First, first of all, active or passive discrimination in social economics, educational, and other service areas, government service areas. In, uh, is in most cases it went down by the government. The provision of religious freedom is one of the Muslim minorities are facing around the world. Uh, you can see examples of closure of mosques, uh, and, and religious schools, uh, targeting religious scholars and leaders, uh, restrictions on banning religious festivities, and third category is terror and violence against Muslim minority. Incitement of violence by majority population, terror by government forces sometimes, our majority population. And then fourth category that we are facing commonly is gross human rights violations. Violation based on basic human rights, some of them amounting to crime against humanity, and then often genocide, slow burning genocide. They are not happening across the world exactly the same way in every places, but there are similarities. Their intensity varies from place to place. Um, I will give you uh, two examples of most recent issues, what in Central African Republic and Rohingya people in Arkansas State in Myanmar. So uh, here I will, I, will focus, uh, I will focus on Rohingya issues uh, uh, because of a dire situation in Arkan. I'll give some examples. These are some of the things happening to Rohingya people and also some, maybe some, some of the things happening in other communities around the world also. Uh, I know uh, all of you, uh, your excellencies, the, the ladies and gentlemen are familiar with Myanmar, but I want to quickly uh, uh, cover that that's where the Rohingya is, where the Myanmar is. Um, uh, here is uh, here's the China, here, here we are today, and here's Myanmar, India, and you see that there's a, a country of Myanmar, and then Blowing up uh, in the larger east is uh, Myanmar country of Burma, and then this is Rohingya, Arkan State, Western, Western coastal area of where the Rohingya people are concentrated in this part of the country. I'm going to give you, I'm not going to show you graphic pictures of violations because very disturbing, uh, you can see on the internet. I'm going to show you some, maybe it's somewhat disturbing, but I, apologize. I apologize if it's too disturbing to you, but I want to show you some violations, how Rohingya Muslims are facing in Burma, show you some examples. That could be happening in many other parts of the world also, uh, in Muslim minority areas, such as Central African Republic. Uh, Rohingya people has deep history in Arkham, many, many, many centuries. There's a, there's a mosque in Arkham, this 14th century mosque called uh, Father Makkah Mosque in Arkan. Uh, they still there, they destroyed it pretty much, the government and the radicals. Here is, you see here, here is a mihrab. Here is a mihrab, here is a imam. They put Buddhist statue now. They have taken over the masjid and the mihrab is Buddhist, all these scriptures and Buddhist uh, god, Buddhist uh, their, their statue. Uh, they're placed in there where Imam will be sitting. So that's how religious persecution is starting from elimination of Islamic identity. That's what they are starting to do. Uh, Rohingya people, uh, settlements, settlement in Rohingya areas. Uh, Rohingya farmland, uh, there was the 
government would bring in uh, Buddhist Rakhine, uh, monks from Bangladesh and other countries, and confiscate Rohingya lands and have a settlement on these, uh, these are settlement units on Rohingya land. Confinement of Rohingya, elderly children, women, they lock them up. These are gross human rights violations, arbitrary arrest and confinement. These are ethnic violation uh, persecution. Women, I have to hide the identity. These Rohingya women have became a target of the armed forces and moms. They are, they are a, a subject of, to abuse, rape, and often trafficking for selling the women. Abuse, persecution against children, Rohingya children. You can see the picture there. This is Rohingya child. This is organized militancy. Uh, you know, Buddhist religion is a very peaceful religion by definition. But unfortunately, there are radical elements inside Burma as hijacked the religion of Buddhism and then became militant. But they do not represent the vast majority of the uh, religion of Dalai Lama and the peaceful religion. This is what Burmese forces are training Buddhist uh, radical monks, extremists, how to shoot, how to commit violence. Muslim houses burned to the ground. Masjids, mosques, centuries old mosques burned to the ground. Another masjid in central Burma, central Burma, that torched by the mosque. Mass population movement, Rohingya, uh, Rohingya uh, uh, villagers and residents have to escape the violence. Their houses are burned. They have to go end up in IDP camps. Now I'm giving you a couple of pictures here. Before the violence, before the burning, uh, a human rights watch from the satellite taking picture. This is a Muslim town. It's all gone. It's a red dot. All the red dots, these are all out completely burned. Eliminated the town. A section of the town. Eliminated the village before and after. An entire village is completely eliminated. Uh, dire situation in IDP camp. Look at the weather, rainy weather, cold weather, hot weather. These children are victims are, and the general Rohingya population, and they are in IDP camps, have to go through dire situation in IDP camps who escape the violence, lock their homes. Homeless, Rohingya families have become homeless. They lost their brothers, they lost their husbands, they lost their fathers, and they have no home, sleeping on the street. Begging, Rohingya woman, she lost her husband, her son, she lost her father. This is the situation, dire situation for Rohingya people as part of the persecution. IDP camps, what can be worse than this? As we are to speak here, we are seeing that children malnourished, no food to eat. Burmese government has blocked I, uh, NGOs for providing uh, assistance. Dire situation. The victims of displacement, victims of violence, victims of persecution. Rohingya Muslims. The government. Look at this. This one here. The mobs is a storage Muslim homes. The policemen are watching. Often there are allegations that policemen have police forces have joined the mobs to set the fire. Here, government forces putting the gun on the Rohingya women to call, forcing the term Bengali. You are not Rohingya, you are Bengali, there is nothing called Rohingya. They are changing the identity, forcing Rohingya to change the identity. These are the census taking, data taking. They are forcing Rohingya to, to uh, accept the term Bengali instead of Rohingya. So this is the, this is some of the challenges we face. Uh, that this graph exa examples of persecution, religious and ethnic persecution that I want, I want to show you. Uh, so, uh, uh, Rohingya, who are the Rohingya people? First thing I want to ask, you probably know, uh, Rohingya people have the roots in our country for thousands of years. Uh, you look at the history book, I have distributed a publication there, you can look at that, who Rohingya are in details. And why ethnic cleansing? Why, why they are doing it to us? 
why is the government doing, why is the, uh, the radical Buddhist monks are doing that? Because there are four primary reasons. One reason is that part of a national policy. Burma has, Myanmar has growing nationalism of purity of religion and culture, religion and, and, and ethnic, ethnicity. They want to be pure. They want a pure Buddhist state. They want to be pure uh, 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 Burman race. So purity. So they want to eliminate anybody who is not Buddhist or who is not Burman. That's a national, growing national uh, nationalism of purity. Elimination of a population, minority population. Right? They want to eliminate one a population so the Arkana state can be purely Buddhist state. Destruction of Islamic identity. I've shown you the pictures. I've shown you the Mehra. They put the Buddhist statue in there. Burning the masjid, old masjid, new masjid. Destruction of Islamic identity. And also Burmese government has another place called divide and rule. We have two big ethnic groups. Buddhist Rakhine and Muslim Rohingya. Government is trying to divide them. So they let them fight. And have a Buddhist fight a Muslim. So government have an upper hand to control both. <coughs> uh, these have been systematic approach. Uh, ethnic cleansing of Rohingya, persecution of Rohingya, as from 1962. And uh, this is this has gone been going on for 50 years. Similarly, by 2012, it exploded uh, with tremendous, enormous violence against Rohingya people. That has led to displacement of over 200,000 people inside Burma, 140,000 IGB camps. And the rest of them are not in the camps, but in Rohingya villages, in homes, are Rohingya homes taking shelter for them. So, uh, why? Why is this ethnic identity of Rohingya? Why is the government telling us, you don't call yourself Rohingya, call yourself Bengali? What is that? Idea. The idea is to marginalize us, to re our citizenship has been revoked. All Rohingya were citizens of Myanmar until 1962. Uh, with NRC card, National Registration card. Now they have confiscated all the cards. Now they want to make us Bengali and they will naturalize in best case scenario. If they do naturalize, they will put Rohingya in internment camps, permanent camps, and ready to deport to third country where we want to take. This is the idea. So they want to be deprive the first class, class one bona fide citizenship that we had. So now you, you term yourself, Burmese government is terming naming us Bengali, so we cannot qualify as an ethnic minority to be, to regain, to reclaim our citizenship. Situation on the ground, you have seen that IDP camps, uh, uh, in Rohingya villages, there's a thing called verification process now, verifying what are they going to verify. This is a joke, this is a trap, setting up to make Rohingya, artificially, to make Rohingya Bengali. To eliminate Rohingya ethnic identity. And this is verification process. And white cups, they issued a temporary white cups. So I want to touch a little bit international perspective. International community has mobilized, finally, after 2012, 2012 uh, violence. Uh, uh, United Nations General Assembly had three resolutions in 2013, 20, uh, 2012, 2013, 2014. A strong resolution, UNGA, United Nations General Assembly. And we have United, United Nations Human Rights Council in Geneva had resolutions. And OIC, the Organization of Islamic Community of Cooperation, has uh, a resolution passed. And uh, United States government, US Congress, United States Congress has passed resolution 418 to Rohingya, and we're going to get one in Senate very soon. And European Union has spoken out, and several other countries, Alhamdulillah, Muslim Ummah, OIC, 57 member states, particularly Saudi Arabia and Gulf states are standing for Rohingya people, uh, our countries mainly in Middle East. Um, uh, so inshallah we will continue to, international product pressure is the most important thing, to put pressure on Myanmar government so that they will talk. We want this, this problem solved peacefully through negotiation and dialogue, to diplomatic means. That's why we need international pressure. So what do we expect from international community? Oh, what, what do we expect from you? What you can do? What international community can do? What Muslim Ummah can do to save this ethnic minority becoming a, a, a history, become going to be disappearing from the surface of the earth if you don't intervene and save Rohingya people? Uh, there are, there are, I'm going to briefly, that I'm about running out of time, I'm going to briefly here. There are these 
solution for this problem has to be three phase. One is immediate goal, which is removal of regional law, regional rules, uh, it, uh, then reinstate human rights violation, human rights, basic human rights for Rohingya people, and return of IDP camps, and this uh, return of humanitarian aid quickly to IDP camps. That's short, a very immediate goal. We immediately need that. And as short-term goal, IDP has to be resettled, and Rohingya people will re need to rebuild their, I mean, um, uh, rebuild, uh, Rohingya people have to rebuild, uh, uh, rebuild their homes and, 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 and mosques, and then they have, they, their lands has to be returned, confiscated lands to be returned. These are short-term goals that Myanmar government needs to do, and we have mid-term and long-term goal, long goals. The most important thing is 1982 citizenship law that disqualifies Rohingya, the marginalized Rohingyas, calling them Bengali. We have to pressure, international community need to pressure the government of Myanmar to amend this law so that they will not be discriminating against us. Amendment of 1982 law or rewriting the law that will not marginalize us. Uh, Myanmar government cannot stop us to deny our self-identification Rohingya. We are who we are. We are Rohingya, we always be Rohingya. We have been Rohingya. Myanmar government cannot make us Bengali. And international community need to speak out more loudly about the self-identification of Rohingya people. Uh, Myanmar government need to come to the middle and become a true facilitator, honest facilitator of peace between Buddhists and Muslims, uh, Rohingya and Rakhine. Myanmar government should not take side they should be in the middle, a true facilitator, honest broker, so we can get a peace. And their long-term objectives will be to development of this uh, Ararakan state to benefit all the communities that Myanmar government need to take initiative, need to talk to international community, coordinate with the international community, and develop the region, and bring peace, stability, communal harmony in Rakhine state so Rohingya people can live peacefully along with any other minority in Myanmar. Jazakallah thank you very much. Thank谢Dr.Wooding的报告。他的报告非常重要,我们这几年来我们是在关心非穆斯林地区对穆斯林少数民族的迫害行为,一直在亚洲,刚才 Dr.Wooding这边提到了这个大家所关注的 Please. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Please. I want to ask uh, Dr. Rakan. Actually, my heart, how hard and how so bleed with you. Uh, my question, uh, Doctor, uh, what is the, is there any light at the end of the tunnel? If there is such light, how long will you get yourself out of this uh, predicament? Thank you, Doctor. Yeah, uh, there is light at the end of the tunnel, but we need to get there. Uh, how do we get there? We need to drive faster, we need to drive effectively, we need to mobilize as a community rather than Rohingya people can be isolated. And international community is speaking out about Rohingya. President Obama went to Burma and talked about Rohingya to Burmese government, gave a speech about Rohingya issue. United Nations, all this international community is speaking out, this is the vehicle. We need to get faster to the end of the tunnel to see the light where we are seeing. So the, 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 the answer will be the sustaining, sustaining, I underscore the word, sustaining the international pressure on Myanmar government. If we slow down, international community slow down, and Burmese government will take advantage of that, and they will then track. So it's so important that we cannot slow down on this advocacy and fight for this cause for Rohingya issue, United Nations, European Union, OIC, United Nations Human Rights Council, US Congress, Canadian Parliament, all of them have been. And 
ASEAN has been a little bit problem for us because they are always want to maintain good relations with Myanmar government. The more question please, that you continue to work on. Channel 2. Okay, please. Peaceful by and large, 
accept these radical, sub few radical elements. So we need to encourage the moderate elements inside Burma, in the Buddhist community, and in the government. So they, inside the government, we have the information that there are moderate elements in there too, but they're voiceless. We need to give them voice. That's why in our engagement with, with the government, with the interfaith community, we give them voice. Uh, Dr. Walker, uh, if I may continue with my second question, how difficult is it to enter the refugee camp? We tried one time, we were, we are being, uh, the word is prohibited to have. How far is this true? Uh, it is very true that Myanmar government restricts international aid group Getting, in, getting access into refugee camps. Now, it was, before 2013, it was okay, but in 2013, uh, early, early 2014, the government expelled all NGOs, all of the one of them, uh, 33 NGOs are there, and then they expelled all of them, and then Malteser, Doctors Without Borders, so many of them, and then they finally they let them in, a few of them, not all of them, but what they did was, the government has formed a called ECC, Emergency Coordination Council. You know who the council members are? Who has attacked NGOs? They became uh, uh, ECC. So, wherever they can go, what they can do, the NGOs, refugee camps, they, it, it will have to get permission from ECC. ECC controls the activity of aid, aid groups. So if ECC, these governments ECC, doesn't want one NGO to certain camps, they cannot go. So it is restricted. That's what the problem is. We are demanding Governor Myanmar to give unfettered access, un unhindered access to all the refugee community just for humanitarian aid, just for food, medicine. And that's what we are getting there because the ECC is blocking, blocking international community and international community is ending out equally if there's any needy Buddhist community, international community is willing, giving them also supplies. It's not just for Rohingya. I want to make it clear. Yeah. International community is doing this even handedly, giving supplies to needy Buddhists and needy Muslims, uh, Rohingya. But yet they are not giving access. It's very true that government is blocking through ECC and this international aid groups getting access to uh, refugee camps. Uh, doctor, last question. What happened to the Muslims in Myanmar who are not Rohingyas? Oh, they are also in a very difficult situation. The situation is slightly better in the central Burma, but they, are, they have become a target. After the violence started against Muslim, the Rohingya Muslims in Arakan state, it spilled over to central Burma, Mechila and other places, and they have attacked Muslims. They have, they have, you know, you see on the internet, I input those pictures, people, they are burning people, Muslim people alive, the kind of violence has to come, taken place, so they are becoming a victim as well. Assalamu alaikum, doctor, please. Can I? You stated that there are two divisions or levels of persecution, the ethnic and the religious. And you stated that the moves against the Rohingya is actually to eliminate them as an ethnic people. Is that correct? You spoke of a genocide. Yes. Uh, Does it not be stronger and more appropriate if you ask for the support of the United Nations, invoking the principle laid down by the UN? of the right to self-determination, the recognition of the cultural identity of peoples, and press on the cultural and the ethnic identity of your people rather than on the basis of religion. Because we have seen through the centuries how the use of religion led to the murders of millions and the deprivation of so many people. So would, not, would that not be better approach. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, the very, very, good, very good question. Uh, 
Burmese government, we want this issue to be resolved peacefully through diplomatic means. Uh, once we go to other route, uh, 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 that self-determination, and, and that's, that's something that we do not, Rogia people do not, do not desire. We want to be coexisting, we want to be the part of Burma, Roma have want to be parts of Burma, and we want to be integrated, or maintain our culture, identity, religion, but we want to be integrated. That would be the best solution for, for that. For that. Self-identification is one thing that you touched, is very important. United Nations, human, uh, uh, human, human population, or United Nations Population Fund has did a census. Burmese government has made an agreement with the United Nations that this all people of Burma will be able to self-identify themselves, including Rohingya. But in come to Rohingya, government said you cannot do it. So we need to we need to pressure through international community, uh, United Nations, that Rohingya ethnic identity has to be respected. Burmese government cannot eliminate Rohingya ethnic identity because Rohingya people cultural the backbone of Rohingya people are Islamic identity. So if they can eliminate Rohingya population, they are eliminating Islam from our town. And then they will go to Central Burma, Pante, Myanmar Muslim, Pati Muslim, they all become a target after they eliminate Rohingya. But their Rohingya is the first phase. So that's why uh, that, uh, Myanmar government uh, has to respect the ethnic identity of Rohingya. When they respect, accept that, reinstate the ethnic identity of Rohingya, then Rohingya will be one of the ethnic minorities which will be qualified to reclaim their first class, class one, bona fide citizenship. In less than a minute, Doctor, let me just state that the principle of self-determination does not necessarily mean the setting up of an independent state, but simply the recognition of the identity of our people. Permit me to introduce myself. I am Dr. Firdaus Ismail Yakyabas. I am the Sultan of Lanao, Chairman of the Bangsa Party. We strongly believe that self-determination for Rohingya ethnic identity and Rohingya rights are the fundamental rights of the Rohingya people and it cannot be traded, it cannot be compromised. We, want, we are self-determined to maintain our ethnic identity as Rohingya. Can I talk? Uh, sorry. Very, uh, kindly, we will discuss later, please.